Friday, July 14th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, 10 o'clock California time. So we've got three hours before the close, about the middle of the trading day. We have another set of new highs, except for the DIA. The Qs did make a new high this morning and are still up a point and a half. The spider, which I usually start out with, did make new highs also, but the DIA and the Russell 2000 did not. So we are very, very close to a major resistance area. And I don't think we're going to quite get there on this drive up. We're going to see a downside correction maybe starting today. That's the way it looks right now. In fact, we're very close to the low of the day so far on the spider, only up a very modest 20 ticks, hardly anything. So if it goes negative or red while we're doing the YouTube, that'll be new lows for the day. And I think I've got an alarm that's going to go off also any moment, as a matter of fact. Okay, so we're overbought yesterday and today with new highs dangerous to be going long in an overbought condition i'm looking for sell signals now if the s p spider can get below yesterday's low which wouldn't be that big a deal it'll turn red and i will get an official er sell signal which could be a little bit more seriously bearish than i'm thinking at the moment all I really want right now is for the market to come down to about 443 and a third to close a gap from earlier this week. The gap that I thought we were going to close way down here at 423, I don't think so anymore. Unless there's a really serious bearish engulfing here. And look at we're almost lower on the day, only up a few ticks to literally less than 10. Any second, it'll be turning red, maybe. Up two. Nope. Okay. I'm not going to watch that all morning. So, um, looking for more weakness. Looking for a reversal, maybe, on a spider. And coming back down to at least 443. And maybe tickling the lows of last week, which would be 437. But between... 443 and 437, I think the spider is likely to turn around and start to rally back up. And we just turned red negative on the day on the SPY for the first time today. We are now lower than the previous close. Now, I have an alarm line that's going off, and I just simply want to lower that quite a bit. So it's not going to be a, a pain. Okay, good. So here we go. Maybe a reversal in process, progress. The DIA is still up a dollar, dollar nine, a point. And the Qs are dropping pretty quick. They were a lot stronger earlier. Now they're up less than a point. Very interesting. We'll get to that in a moment. So here's our one minute chart. We just tanked a little bit for the last couple of minutes on the spider. Starting to do that and almost making a new low for a couple of hours on the DIA right at this level approximately. The DIA bumped for the third time recently against a significant resistance area and stopped twice June 15, 16, and coming close June 30 and July 3rd, Monday. Also pushing through those highs by a very small amount, but not holding it this week, July 12th, and that was Wednesday, and today, again, challenging the same resistance area, and now starting to slip off only 85 cents lower on the Qs and a dollar higher on the DIA. So all of these could turn red pretty quickly. Let's go look at the Qs real quick. They're still higher on the day. There's no gap to close anymore. There's no gap on the DIA uh, except for a couple of days ago on the DIA, there's that gap. The Qs have two gaps 
and are overbought. Prime territory for sell signals and the beginning of a downside correction. I'm not bearish. I'm only looking for a bit of a dip here to get long to be a buyer. And for the Qs, that would be down to about 368, 369. What about the 2000? It did not make a higher high, but it also has been overbought yesterday and today. And it has already closed its gap from earlier this week already. So it'll probably drop off even more into the support area and maybe a bit more. Everything looks like it's going to start dipping down a bit more. Let's go to futures. The S&P E-mini, same thing as the SPY, except the trading hours are significantly different. Therefore, you end up with slightly different technical signals as well as a very minor change in overall longer term formations. They're usually about the same and no significant difference for formations that take, you know, weeks or months to form. So looking for a downside correction, minimum downside dip here to 44.96, give or take a little. Next chart, natural gas is uh, starting to make new lows. This is out of sequence. Nevertheless, we had a sell signal and we're starting to make new lows. Next chart, and I'm looking for lower levels. Bonds, which has been spectacular. I have showed you, and I really should bring this back up again. I'm sorry. Let me do this very quickly for you. Um, here we go. This is the Ehrlich Cycle Forecaster on the bond market daily data. And for the last two weeks now, I've been showing you this 88-day cycle that has been phenomenal. Almost exactly, if not exactly, to the day for the last few cycle lows, we have hit a turning point right on time, which is almost unheard of. Cycles are great tool to use to get a handle on when tops and bottoms are supposed to develop. The cycles are not necessarily that good to predict exactly the day or they're going to turn, although you got to look at this one. I swear, yep, I swear often, too often. Look at this. Exactly to the day. Exactly to the day. Exactly to the day. One day early and a bullish ER buy signal, no less, June 16th of last summer. Almost on time. And right in the green bar, which is the window of opportunity, the time frame that I've elected to use for this particular cycle. And if you look at previous lows, they're, they're pretty good. If you bought during the green time frame, you would have made money. Now, that one was iffy. So I'm going to say no. This was a very small profit. That was a very small profit. This was gigantic. And you can figure it out for yourself. Take this week and go back 88 days again and again and again and find out how often you pick upward turning point, starting points, bottom of the break in the bond futures market. Also in 10-year notes. So let's go back to the futures. Bonds are dipping for the first time since the cycle low and a little bit of a dip. I don't see any problems. RSI is nowhere near overbought. I am expecting it to gain ground next week and to make highs higher than today's high next week. Um, hopefully, it'll at least get up to 129 next week. Next chart, 10-year notes. Same kind of commentary. We are now easily back up above a previous bear trend line, a bull trend line, which had been broken about a week ago, but it did not stay below it for very long. Psycho low kicked in, oversold conditions, and zoom, right back up again. So after this little dip for maybe a day and a half, two days, I am hoping to, I'm expecting to see new highs next. And I'm very, very, very bullish long-term in interest rate futures. Overbought conditions in crude oil are leading to today a dip down 
unfortunately not quite a bearish engulfing. I'll bet you these highs are almost exactly the same. Today, 77.30 for the high and yesterday, 77.33. So today's high is not higher than yesterday. Therefore, you don't have an outside down day or a bearish engulfing, same thing. And therefore, it's not red, but I had all the other criteria in place, overbought, and no signal per se. Next chart, looking for lower levels. We got one on heating oil. Heating oil has got a bearish engulfing outside down day Ehrlich sell signal. Uh, ER, Ehrlich reversal, official sell signal. Love it. Let's see how this one works out. Looking for lower levels and frankly, below the May lows. Next, gold. Sideways today, pretty much in a resistance area. Looking for it to dip back down a little bit more, but the trend is up. Not quite sure about myself on this, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I do think it's going to dip a little bit, but I'm not sure if it's going to make new lows or rally up a little bit more first. It's very close to overbought, so I favor this probability of a little bit of a dip. Next, silver overbought two days in a row. Probably about to turn back down early next week, if not today. It's not over yet. So I'm looking for silver to start to slip. Good short sale potential in front of you right here, I think. Next, platinum. Extremely close to overbought. Very, very close. A little bit more of a rally is not only going to turn the price bar yellow for overbought conditions, but then a little bit above yesterday's high, which makes it a prime candidate for a bearish engulfing, if it can turn around and, you know, come down below yesterday, Thursday's low, which doesn't look particularly likely getting a little late in the day, and that would be a fairly large break, so probably not going to happen. But it's close to a rally high, probably. Next, high-grade copper resistance, also extremely close to overbought, probably going to turn down bear trend has started for the year the last six seven months looking for lower levels 37 3.7 down to 3.5 next soybeans i talked about the bearish engulfing new short sale signal on wednesday right yesterday thursday it came up very very close to the stop and today it hit my stop so this sell signal didn't work but the profound situation that we find ourselves in is this incredible resistance area over a one year period there is a possible double top it can't go any higher especially in a closing basis or it begins to ruin the double top it should could start to go down below last week's lows on a closing basis and start to eat into the support area of which there's a lot of it all the way down to 1069. If perchance in the next few weeks or a couple of months or more, it does not make any new highs and it comes all the way down to that 169 and drops below it, you have a gigantic long-term huge double top formation. That remains to be seen. Keep a close eye on soybeans next to soybean oil. Overbought, starting to go sideways a week and a half. Attempt to make new highs today. Failing, slipped to lower on the day quite a bit. I think we're starting to move our uh, starting to move down again. Looking for lower levels. Soybean meal, pennant formation for the last month or so. I think it's going to break down. I think the market's starting to turn bearish here, intermediate to longer term, looking for lower levels. Corn had a bad buy signal three days ago, had a day trade loss, small one, made new lows for the trend, but didn't go anywhere. Immediately yesterday, jumped back up, and today we've seen it make a new high for the last two weeks, but it's not holding it anymore. What's the overall trend here? basically lower 
except for that rally a few weeks ago, we have, for the most part, lower highs and eh, pretty much sideways lows. And I'm going back at least a year, year and a half. <coughs> so my opinion is lower levels with the other grains next week. Wheat. We had a sell signal several days ago, kicking in pretty good. It was an ambiguous one because I don't like getting a sell signal when we are that low on the RSI already. But, you know, I mentioned uh, maybe make an adjustment in the code per se, but it's been working. Let's see if it can make new lows for the trend, sell signal or no sell signal. It got way overbought in a significant area of resistance and turned down. So I think we're still going to head lower. Next, live cattle. Got overbought a few days ago, had a little correction, rallying back up today. This is obviously a bull trend. And again, I'm sorry, I have to do this, no pun intended. <laughs> but uh, So I have to be bullish on the cattle. Um, we're not that close to, um, eh, we're, we're sort of close to overbought, but you can jam into the overbought territory again, making new highs. Bull markets do that. They'll make new highs, overbought conditions periodically, go sideways or pull back a little bit, and then do it again and again and again. I'm noticing the spiders back up higher on the day just by a tiny bit. And the DIA is up 120 and 110 or so for the Qs hoping that they turn back down again real quick before my um, YouTube is over. Let's see what happens with the next chart, live hogs. Sell signal, I also mentioned periodically that these signals tend to cluster. Within approximately a month, I've seen two, three, and rarely four, and of course signals in the same direction, either buy signals or sell signals, and usually one of them is the high or low for the whole damn move up or down. Sometimes we just get a sell signals and that's not the highest high or the lowest low. That's a little disappointing, but it still gives you a handle on which way the market is trying to move, change direction probably. And my opinion is back down somewhat here on hogs. Next is OJ, this head and shoulder top I've been talking about for always a week now, um is still forming it hasn't resolved itself this looks like the last shoulder it is now six days in the making the first shoulder was approximately four five six or so before it dipped down came back for another little bump here and then dropped made the high the head of the formation dropped down created the neckline now we've got maybe the last shoulder high all we need is for this thing to start to slide down. I don't want any higher highs. If perchance it makes a higher high by a very small amount and fails badly right away, okay. But I don't think it's going to do that. I think it's just going to be heading Tierra del Fuego real quick. Next, Coco. <sighs> Bull trend, no doubt about that. Nowhere near overbought. Looks like it's going to make new highs for the trend very soon. Caught in the rag, sideways for a long period of time. Uh, frankly, approaching a full year almost. And I can't say anything until it breaks out bullish or bearish. Uh, my opinion would be down because ever since a year plus ago, we've had the lower highs over time. And in general, broadly speaking, lower lows, but not since November. So, you know, this year it's sideways. Next, sugar. Getting close to overbought, but not too close yet. Right underneath the previous bull trend line, which was broken. The double or triple top formation worked really well and very accurately, almost exactly to the downside objective. We're in an area of resistance, which I expected on the rally. I'm looking for a sell signal. Next, coffee. We had a buy signal yesterday. It was the second buy signal clustering in the last two weeks. The first one got stopped out, unfortunately, near the bottom of the break. It happens, not very often, thank goodness. 
small loss almost always when you're having a losing having a losing trade. Yesterday's buy signal so far is working perfectly. We opened a little bit above the bid, dropped slightly, got long at about 158.45. Currently 6010, 160.10, a little profit, starting out just fine. I mentioned yesterday, I like the look of this bullish engulfing. It wasn't very big, but the size of it is not necessarily a big deal. Next chart is back to the E-mini. This is Friday. See you on Monday. Have a great weekend.